Glazing is probably the most valuable technique that I have in my painting arsenal. It's an invaluable painting method that any artist should master, especially those aiming for realism with their work. I'm going to share with you my five simple steps to help you master the glazing technique. We can break it up into five stages. The underpainting, the saturated colour, the shadows, opacity and details. Let's break down the underpainting first. You can see from this stage I have already painted my background in using grey acrylics and some white and black airbrush paint. Painting the background first like this is just a personal preference and it doesn't have any effect on the overall technique. The important part of the underpainting is step one, which is start light. I like to create very light underpaintings using pure white. I block in the basic shapes and the structures and I'm not focusing on tiny details, but just enough to provide information about the subject that I'm trying to paint. In this case, it's this parakeet from Unsplash. I first tried this approach in a video painting white tiger fur, and I absolutely loved how efficient it made the painting process. I'll pop a link down to that video in the description. Step two is all about adding the basic saturated colors. To do this, I first need to thin the paint. You can do this with a glazing medium or with water, or any combination of the two. I've always used water in my paintings and I've never had any issues with it. I could go into a whole new video about glazing mediums versus water. If you'd like to watch that, please let me know in the comments. But for now, we'll keep it simple and just use water. The basic principle of glazing is that we are adding water to thin our paints to make it more transparent. It's hard to describe the exact method here as the amount of water you add can vary from around 30% to 80% water to paint ratio. It all depends on the paint you're using. Heavy body acrylic paints with lots of pigment will need more water. Liquid acrylics or paints with very little pigment will need less water. As well as the thickness of paints, you also have to consider the opacity of the paints. The best paints for glazing are transparent paints and transparent colors. As a general rule for acrylics, any paints that have the word hue in their name are usually going to be more transparent. These are the perfect paints for glazing. In this painting, I'm using cadmium red hue, cadmium orange hue, and cadmium yellow hue for the brighter feathers, and hooker's green for the feathers of the wing. It is important to mention that if you do add too much water, it will cause the paint to bead over the surface of the canvas rather than actually stick to it. If this is happening in your paintings, then you're adding too much water to your glazes. At this stage, I'm just looking for the basic colours. I'm not thinking about the shadows or the highlights, just the base colours for each area of the painting. The white underlayer enables the glazes to be as saturated as possible. The darker areas of the underpainting appear less saturated when glazed over. Step three is where we start to add the shadows. Before you start with this step, it is very important that you let the layer completely dry. You cannot glaze over wet paint. With acrylics, you can either wait or you can use a hairdryer. If it isn't completely dry, you can end up picking up some of the paint already on the canvas as you apply your new glaze. For the shadows, I like to use a dark brown mixed with a little bit of blue to desaturate it. But the actual colour of the shadows depends on the painting you are creating. Sometimes you need warm shadows, sometimes you need cold shadows. The first glaze ends up leaving the painting looking a bit cartoony and two-dimensional. So we need to add the shadows to give the subject form and make it look more 3D. I use my reference to follow the areas that are in the shadow. I glaze those areas on the painting. It doesn't matter if you start to lose definition and details in these shadowy areas, as in real life, these are the least detailed sections that you would see. So far, we've only used transparent glazes, and the painting can start to get a little bit wishy-washy. To fix that, we need step four, 
which is adding some opaque colours. Usually, when you buy paint, there's a guide saying which colours are transparent and which ones are opaque. You can see that you've got the little T for transparent, the O for opaque, and the S for semi-transparent. If you don't have access to this guide, then just test the paint. See which one covers best. The less that shows through, the more opaque the paint. I start to build up these opaque layers, which gives the painting a much more solid feel. Sometimes there might not be an opaque version of the colour that I want to use. Adding small amounts of titanium white to a transparent colour can increase its opacity. Be careful with this though, as too much white will desaturate the colour and give it a pastel-like pale colour. Not only do these opaque layers solidify the painting, but by their nature they are thicker than the watered down glazes. So add physical 3D texture to the painting surface, which helps even more to emphasise the 3D form of the subject. The fifth and final step is about adding the details. This step comes in two parts. Details in terms of the structures and the form, and then details in terms of the final shadows and final highlights. I use a combination of glazes to add more refined shadows to the feathers, and opaque highlights using paint mixed with white, both of which help to refine the shape and form of the bird. The glazing process like this can be applied to animals, people, objects, whatever you want. I've used the exact same technique for painting the tree branch the bird is sitting on. Learning how to glaze is probably the technique that improved my paintings the most, and it is definitely a technique that I recommend trying to master. If you'd like to see more of the glazing technique in action, then check out my video for painting white tiger fur. I also have a real-time version of this bird painting on my Patreon channel. You can watch it and paint along yourself. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.